Hello friends, this video on life processes part 31 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. On the basis of whatever we have studied so far, let us quickly look at some of the questions and let us see if we can answer most of them. The xylem in plants are responsible for transport of water, transport of food, transport of amino acids or transport of oxygen. It's very easy. Xylem is mainly used for transport of water and minerals. So the option A would be the correct answer. Xylem responsible for transport of water. The next one. Autotrophic mode of nutrition requires carbon dioxide and water, chlorophyll, sunlight, all of the above. I don't think I really need to answer it. All of you must be knowing it. What does it need? It needs carbon dioxide, water as well as chlorophyll and sunlight. So all of the above. Breakdown of pyruvate to carbon dioxide, water and energy takes place in cytoplasm, mitochondria, chloroplast or nucleus. Now, please remember the process, the stepwise process of respiration. In both aerobic and anaerobic respiration, but first step is conversion of glucose into pyruvate. So that happens in the cytoplasm. Now once pyruvate is formed, what happens? Pyruvate enters into the mitochondria. And this pyruvate loses one carbon dioxide and forms acetyl coenzyme A. That acetyl coenzyme A then finally undergo aerobic respiration and give carbon dioxide, water and energy. So where does this process take place? This takes place in the mitochondria. So second option is the correct answer. So now it is time to answer some questions. So the question says, how are fats digested in our bodies and where does this process take place? So now I have discussed this while I was talking about nutrition in human beings. So fats, what are they actually composed of? They are actually composed of simpler substances like fatty acids and glycerol. So they need some enzymes for their digestion. So from where do we get those enzymes? We get those enzymes from the pancreatic juice, right? So here if you see this pancreas, through the pancreatic duct will send the pancreatic juice into the duodenum of the small intestine. Again, this bile juice from the gallbladder will come through the bile duct into the duodenum. So this is the gallbladder. What is this blue colored line? This is the bile duct. Now, this green colored line is the pancreatic duct. So they all meet in the duodenum. So duodenum is the place where the bile juice will make the acidic food alkaline. So it will make the medium alkaline. So once the medium is alkaline, the pancreatic enzymes will start acting. What is the pancreatic enzyme which helps in digestion of fat? There is an enzyme called pancreatic lipase. This acts on fat and digests them. So where does this process take place? It takes place in the duodenum of the small intestine. And what is this process called? This process is known as emulsification of fats. So it occurs in the small intestine, especially in the duodenum region. So pancreas contains pancreatic juice which contain the enzyme pancreatic lipase for fat digestion. How is it brought to the duodenum? With the help of the pancreatic duct. Similarly, liver secretes bile juice which is stored in the gallbladder which is also needed for fat digestion. So how is it brought to the duodenum? Through the bile duct. Now in the duodenum we have both the bile juice as well as the pancreatic enzymes. So bile juice makes the medium alkaline and therefore activates the pancreatic enzymes. Now these pancreatic enzymes that is the pancreatic lipase act on the fats and digest them. So this is how the digestion of fat takes place. Next question, what is the role of saliva in the digestion of food? So I have explained all these things but just for a review I am just going through these questions again. Saliva is the watery fluid present in our mouth. I have discussed this. The first function is that it moistens the food which we take inside our mouth. Therefore it makes the food softer and it becomes easier for us to chew it then. Secondly, it also contains an enzyme salivary amylase which converts starch into, into maltose. 
what is starch starch is a polysaccharide that means here you see this is starch that means so many glucose molecules join together to form starch so you can see this is quite complex whereas maltose is a disaccharide that means two glucose molecules join together to form maltose so this salivary amylase converts starch into maltose so that means this complex molecule is converted into a far simpler molecule so that is the role of the enzyme that is the role of the saliva next question what are the necessary conditions for autotrophic nutrition and what are its by products what is autotrophic nutrition it means self dependent nutrition that means the organisms will prepare their own food so what are the how do organisms generally prepare their own food by photosynthesis and for that we need carbon dioxide water chlorophyll and sunlight so these are the necessary conditions for autotrophic nutrition and what are the by products let us look at the equation for photosynthesis what happens in photosynthesis carbon dioxide combines with water in presence of chlorophyll and sunlight to form glucose that is C6H12O6 plus water plus carbon dioxide so now if we balance this equation we get something like this so now this carbon dioxide is then released so what are the products here the products are glucose i'm sorry here it is not carbon dioxide it is oxygen i'm sorry so carbon dioxide is taken in during photosynthesis and only oxygen is given out so the products are glucose oxygen and water another question yet how are the alveoli designed to maximize the exchange of gases so we have seen that in the respiratory system which is the main site for gaseous exchange at the actual gaseous exchange takes place in the alveoli and what are the features that alveoli has which actually ensures that the gaseous exchange occurs in a proper way so what are the features of alveoli they have got thin walls so that the diffusion of the gases from alveoli to the capillaries becomes easier because these balloon shaped structures are the alveoli and this red and blue structures they are the capillaries so in order that the exchange of gases between them happens very efficiently they have very thin walls the walls are covered with capillaries so they are the walls are connected to a network of capillaries so it becomes easier like the blood vessels are connected to the alveoli so in that way also it becomes very easy to maximize the exchange of gases next question what would be the consequences of a deficiency of hemoglobin in our bodies so what would what is hemoglobin it is the respiratory pigment which is present in the red blood cells of our body and hemoglobin has a high affinity for oxygen this is the pigment which actually imparts red color to the blood so what is the function of hemoglobin it helps in the heat it is present in the red blood cells and since hemoglobin has an affinity for oxygen therefore the red blood cells transports oxygen to the different cells of the body so what would happen if there is a deficiency of hemoglobin so this is a respiratory pigment found inside rbcs have high affinity for oxygen oxygen so consequences of its deficiency it will adversely affect the oxygen supplying capacity of the blood because if hemoglobin is not there there is nothing which has uh, an attractive uh, feature for oxygen so nothing will attract oxygen that much so the blood will not carry that much of oxygen at as it used to when there was hemoglobin so the oxygen supplying capacity of the blood will get affected adversely and also deficiency of oxygen in the blood cells now when the oxygen supplying capacity is affected that means the cells are not getting enough oxygen so cells will have the deficiency of oxygen and we know that how important oxygen is for the cells because it is with the help of this oxygen that cellular respiration happens in each of the cells this might the decrease in hemoglobin in the body might also cause to a disease called anemia which is mostly prevalent in females wherein the person turns quite pale in color because the uh, hemoglobin decreases and hemoglobin is the one which gives red color to the blood so the person who looks quite pale so these are some of the consequences of deficiency of hemoglobin in our bodies thank you
please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.